it is Danny and welcome to this update video this morning. I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. And so we'll be taking a look at what is going on across the North Atlantic. And the main talk of the video, as you may be able to tell from the thumbnail, the title, is that massive dust moving in. So I didn't post an update video yesterday. Uh, I've had a pretty busy and tiring week uh, but I'm back at it again today so I had mentioned in my previous video that we would have that uh, increase or that surge in dust that would result in uh, those hazy skies and the other effects of these Saharan dust in parts of the Caribbean so that is coming to fruition it may be hazy for where you're at we're going to be looking at the forecast and we'll be talking more about the effects of the Saharan dust and of course we'll be looking at the rainfall and the wind forecast in this video but just before we delve straight into it here is something new that i'm actually incorporating in some of my update videos qotd question of the day your question is what is classified as a major hurricane save your answer as it will be given to you later down in the video but let's get back to what is happening in terms of weather conditions right now so some areas have been quite active, such as Northern South America. We've seen lots of thunderstorms developing. Uh, some areas have received a lot of heavy rain, but that's not the story for everywhere in Northern South America. And uh, for parts of the Caribbean, it's been getting a lot quieter. There hasn't been too much rain around. Uh, so some drier, more stable conditions have been set in. And, and as I mentioned that, let's go on to this map here. This is a map of the dry air. So within those areas of those darker shades of oranges and those reds and even pinks popping up, that is where we have the driest air. So we can see some dry air around uh, in the vicinity of the Gulf, parts of the Northern Caribbean, offshore of the United States, and uh, going into the main development region as well. So between Africa and headed west, we see that it's getting pretty colorful there as well. So thanks to the Saharan dust, the Saharan air layer, which is all that dust being carried from the Sahara Desert in North Africa, there are more drier, uh, stable conditions out there. And even as we look back at the satellite imagery, notice that much is not happening where we would find some of that dust. So some of this dry air is in association with the Saharan dust. And I'll be going on to that momentarily. But how about the rainfall forecast? Who may get some rainfall today? Let's look at it now. This is what the Euro model is showing. We can see that it gets pretty colorful for Northern South America. Again, the area is active and you may be wondering why. Well, it is located uh, along the intertropical convergence zone of some of the countries. And that is basically where the trade winds of the north and the south meet. Now, when they converge, we get more rising air motion. So they meet, that warm air goes up, and as it descends, it is going to cool, form clouds, and we get lots of this activity, lots of thunderstorms, rainfall. So that's generally what's been happening in parts of northern South America, Colombia, Venezuela, the Guyanas as well. But let's head toward, uh, toward the Caribbean islands. There could be some showers around today for parts of the Lesser Antilles, some intermittent showers. And uh, even Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, maybe some spots in Hispaniola, Jamaica. Although for the most part, some areas have been pretty dry, but others have received some well-needed downpours. And towards Central America as well, there could be some rainfall activity within some areas, parts of Belize, Honduras, Nicaragua, El Salvador, uh, and even headed to Costa Rica and Panama, though not very widespread, much not really anticipated for San Andres and Providencia. And things should be somewhat on the drier side for the ABC Islands, the Yucatan of Mexico, or the Cayman Islands, Cuba, the Bahamas and Turks and Caicos Islands, and much of the Florida Peninsula. So that is in terms of rain. And as we head through today, winds are going to be kicking up a little bit, maybe up to 20, 25 knots at the maximum, maybe slightly higher gusts in some areas. But across the eastern islands, it should be kind of on the calmer side. And that's not going to be very helpful because, again, the dust is setting in. So that is going to be helping to limit rainfall activity due to increased atmospheric stability and 
it's also going to be so hot. So without the wind to kind of help to cool things off, it is probably going to be miserable for many people, especially those that have to uh, actually go out as we're going to be heading into the next couple of days. Now let's look at the forecast. So as we're going to be heading into tomorrow on uh, Sunday through today and into tomorrow, we can see these darker shadings of browns and these are representative of higher dust concentration, more coverage of dust, denser dust. And uh, it's going to be quite evident for the Lesser Antilles and even parts of Northern South America going toward the ABC Islands as well. And then as we head further into the week, headed to the midweek, this dust is going to make it to the Western Caribbean, heading over into Central America, Nicaragua, uh, Eastern Honduras as well. So the dust is definitely going to be around, as I said, it is going to be in a higher concentration. Now, what are the effects of these Saharan dust? We've been talking about it. So hazy skies is one of them, that brownish hue, especially as you look into the distance, you'll realize that mountains, the hills are not so clear, looks rather hazy. But uh, the dust can actually help with the bending of light, which is known as refraction. So as the sun uh, as uh, we head into sunset, sunrise, they may be more on the vibrant side. They could be more aesthetically pleasing, if you will. Uh, so that is definitely a good side of it uh, that you can actually observe in the early mornings or the evenings. But uh, it can actually trigger allergies and result in skin and eye, even throat irritation as well. And if you have any breathing conditions, such as myself with asthma, it may actually... Uh, trigger that as well and on the brighter side it also helps to suppress tropical activity so as i mentioned it kind of helps to stabilize atmospheric conditions so as a result there's not as much instability to result in a lot of thunderstorm development and thus in the hurricane season when these plumes of dust may make their way off uh, the african coast and head towards the west moving across the main development region to the caribbean gulf it may actually help prevent tropical cyclones or weakened tropical cyclones which are actually there so those are some of the effects of the saharan dust both positive and negative effects but the more serious one would be the respiratory conditions being potentially triggered now if you have to go outside and you have to be outside for long hours i recommend the n95 mask so uh you know, these various masks, they were being sold a lot in the peak of COVID. So they can actually help out to limit how much dust you inhale. So you can use these if you're in especially the eastern islands that will be blanketed as the new week commences. All right, so back to the question I asked at the start of the video. What is classified as a major hurricane? If you said a hurricane with winds of 111 miles per hour or higher or category 3 or higher, you are correct. So congratulations if you got that question right. I'm starting off very easy, you know. And that's something I always say whenever I'm talking about the hurricane season especially and I'm talking about the forecasts. I would say, for example, uh, this organization is expecting up to five major hurricanes, which is basically Cat 3 or higher. So uh, if you constantly watch my update videos, then you would know that for sure. But yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this video, guys. I hope you found it to be quite informative. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll respond when I get the chance to do so. And remember to always be weatherwise.